जेनरेटिव ए आई फ्रॉम लेमेंस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड दी बेसिक्स ऑफ जेनरेटिव ए आई देन आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन दी फॉर्मल डिफिनेशन ऑफ जेनरेटिव ए आई देन वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ जेनरेटिव ए आई इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम ट्रेडिशनल मशीन लर्निंग एंड डीप लर्निंग I am going to cover some major categories of Gen AI, and I am going to touch upon LLM in that context. That is large language models, and I am going to cover usage of generative AI, and we will discuss some of the next topics that we can cover as part of this series based on your interest. Okay, so first of all, guys, let's start about basics of generative AI. What is generative AI? So going back to the root of artificial intelligence, right? So if I ask you what is artificial intelligence, so you have to just give me answer of what is AI as a whole. AI is nothing but just in three words I will say you making computers intelligent. Okay, making computers intelligent. So this I ask in all my classes normally are computers intelligent. people will say yes and no but normally computers are not intelligent if you do anything that makes systems intelligent everything comes under the umbrella of ai so this red thing that you see here is ai okay now i can make system intelligent by doing n number of things out of those n number of things one thing is known as machine learning okay so this box that you can see here is machine learning now if i ask you what is machine learning the simple definition will be we try to learn the patterns and predict the future behavior so we try to learn the past patterns past attributes try to predict what will happen in the future that is about machine learning then you would have heard of something known as deep learning okay so let me go inside machine learning and draw one more box like this what is deep learning you know in deep learning also we try to learn the pattern or behavior from the past data and predict the future but in a specific way so that way is called neural network way or neuron way or whatever you call it but a sub field of machine learning a specific area of machine learning okay and inside deep learning inside deep learning because generative ai uses in all its application deep learning methodology so i will put it here inside and i will call this i will put it here inside in green color and i will call this generative ai okay so generative ai normally uses deep learning concepts deep learning methodology deep learning ways hence i am putting it inside the deep learning box so what is generative ai basically so guys what is the definition of normal machine learning or deep learning uh i will simply write it here a system okay a system two and here i can write three things okay i can write here three things what are those three things please pay attention here predict predict or classify okay predict or classify or cluster okay predict or classify or cluster barring few algorithms like recommendation engines or some of the specific algorithm if we keep aside most of the algorithm will do these three things they will either predict or they will classify or they will cluster this is your typical machine learning and deep learning okay so i will write here ml plus dl will do these things what will generative ai do is i will write here generative ai okay you can write here a system 2 a system 2 and this keyword is extremely important and crux of the definition guys this is the formal definition of what you called as a generative ai in generative ai you do not predict you do not estimate you do not classify you do not cluster what you do is generate okay and what is the meaning of this generation we will come to this later but for now try to understand this with one more example because this should be very very clear in your mind how generative ai is different from traditional machine learning deep learning or you know ai that we know till today so in traditional ai if you go and you want to estimate y right y is your output f is the function through which your y relates to input so i will just write here what is x 
x is your input what is y y is your output okay what is f f is the function that you are trying to estimate okay so in case of your traditional machine learning and deep learning this f will be again i am writing the same things predict okay or classify okay or cluster this function f what is the job of function f either predict classify or cluster in terms of generative ai what is the job of this function or what this function will learn this function will run how to generate now the question comes what to generate right so generate can be many things for example it can be a text generation it can be a audio generation it can be a video generation it can be a image generation and so on and so forth i will talk about what are the use cases of generative ai in a moment for now try to understand traditional deep learning and generative ai difference okay let's move ahead and try to understand what are the major categories of generative ai so broadly two main categories of generative ai you will hear and one of the most important category that is lot of you know in news and everybody knows about that is something known as large language models okay and other categories of generative ai which is also very popular generative ai category but you know not as popular as large language models so this is known as image based now what is large language models large language models have certain properties that we need to understand okay so just remember these properties about large language models guys basically this is a text you know text based normally uh, it is trained on the text data okay so you can see here trained on large very very large data trend on very large data this is one property of large language models okay second property of large language models is it will be generic in nature so when if you are not able to recollect or understand what is large language model think it as chat gpt so every time you are interacting with chat gpt you are interacting with a large language model so large language model will normally when it is created it is it is generic it is not not prepared to serve any specific purpose so it is it will serve for all the purposes out there okay you want to build a chatbot that is fine for chatbot you want a question answer system it works as a question answer system you want to build a support system it can work as a support system so it is generic in nature when it is built if you do not customize it based on your needs okay and trained on trained on millions and billions of parameter okay so millions of parameter now why i am writing these things here is suppose you don't have very high fi infrastructure right then how would you train a model on millions and billions of parameter so try to understand these guys this is like millions and billions of features and parameters if you don't have a good infrastructure it will be very difficult for you to train your model hence all the big shots for example google okay for example google for example meta or facebook okay for example microsoft all of these big shots have their own large language models which they have trained on very large data set and very high infrastructure now it is not possible for you and me to have that kind of infrastructure and this kind of data set so that we can build our own large language model okay these guys have built their own large language models and if i if i write the name here correctly google's large language model name is palm okay and facebook's large language model is i think something in the lm in the beginning you can check so in the beginning it is lm only and microsoft's also now chat gpt itself is taken by microsoft so that that part we know already right so all the big shots are investing in large language model the reason being this can be used for multi purpose they have the infra and they have the lot of data okay how large language model will be useful to you i am sure you have used chat gpt and you know the capabilities of chat gpt okay so up to here guys whatever i discussed i discussed from beginners point of view and i just wanted to make you understand what is this and how it works okay now as a data scientist as a data analyst or you know somebody who is interested in going deeper in these algorithms 
it will get very technical and I will just write here some of the terms that I can cover if you want me to cover, okay? One, one topic or one natural language processing technique is called encoder decoder, okay? Encoder decoder is one technique that is heavily being used in large language models and all kinds of generative AI tools that you see. Another topic that is interest, interesting and that is very much used in this context is something known as attention mechanism. Okay, attention mechanism. And if you ask me on what these large language models are built, so the answer to that will be something known as BERT and transformers. Okay. So these are the topics, guys, which are advanced neural network systems, okay? And if you know the basics of how ANN, okay? How ANN, RNN works, I'll not say CNN because mostly we'll be talking text data here. If you know how ANN and RNN works, then you have the base of understanding how encoder, decoder, transformers, and attention mechanism will work, okay? This will be very mathematical in nature. So I will keep it for a separate video, but I need to see your comment. I need to say your interest. So if you drop me a comment that, you know, you need videos on these topics, I will definitely create videos and explain you how in Google autocomplete, right? For example, if I, if you go to Google, complete, Google e Gmail, right? And you say, I am going to, then it will automatically start suggesting you something, right? That is nothing but a generative AI. It is generating text, okay? It is generating text for you. At the moment you go to chat GPT and you write, what is, what is world population? What is world population, right? What it gives you, it gives you an answer, okay? So you get an answer using what? Using generative AI large language models. So. If you see what are the different huge cases of large language models, right? I have written here in text for writing text, for creating your content, for example, writing blogs for your support channels, you know, you want to build a chatbot system, question answer system, all these things. This is not the end of it. Few things that came to my mind I have written here in code, right? Suppose I want to convert a Python code to uh, Java code. You can convert the code. You can prepare documentation for the code. You can generate the new code also. You 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 are you would have already done in ChatGPT, I believe. In image, you can generate image. You can extract information from image. What not you can do. In speech, you can generate speech of some person. You can give some text and generate the speech. You can convert the speech in one form to other, one tense, one uh, language to other. Translate it. You can create videos. You can analyze video, like in which part of the video somebody is laughing, somebody is sad, somebody is angry. All those analysis you can do in generative AI. In gaming industry, you can compose music, you can do animation. So there is no end to what can be done in generative AI. Okay. But the fundamentals from technology point of view, if you want to understand, I'm sure you would be having at least some knowledge of deep learning, how it works, how neural network works. If not, you can watch my neural network series. You will get a very good idea. On top of that, we need to learn these three, four things. And then the idea of LLM and the idea of generative AI will be very, very clear for you. So let me know through comments, guys, if you like this introductory video so that I get motivated and create more video on this topic based on your interest. Okay. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, wherever you are, stay safe and take care.